G'day folks. Today I'm just going to do a quick tutorial showing you the basic steps to create a time lapse using your GoPro and free software by GoPro called GoPro Studio. You can download it for free from their website. It comes bundled in the Quick Desktop app. So this will work whether you've shot your time lapse in photo mode or video mode. I'm not going to get into what's better. Um, I've got another video coming up that's going to kind of go over that more in detail. Here on the left hand side, we're going to click on import new files. And this is where we're going to import our photo sequence. If you've shot on photo mode or the video file. So I did mine or the time lapse I'm using is was done in photo mode. So I'm just going to go and select all the images and we're going to hit open. Now what it's going to do is compile everything into one file right here. And you will notice sometimes GoPro will create your time lapses in several different folders. So it's important when you import your files, use the GoPro quick desktop app to import things in because it'll put everything together into one file for you. So now that we've got that, we're just going to check our settings over here. Hopefully I didn't do that too fast for you. Down here at the bottom left hand side where it says advanced settings. And we're going to leave the source at the original 4000 by 3000. Now this is if you've shot in photo mode. If you've shot in video mode it's going to be a little different. Uh, we're going to leave everything the way it is. Uh, we can leave the flicker on. Quality high. And here you can remove fisheye if you want. I kind of like the fisheye effect. It, uh, to me, it looks nice, you know, for some things. So we're going to leave that on, but you can remove that by putting a check mark there. So everything looks good. We're going to hit OK. So now that we've got our settings the way we want them, we're going to click Add to Conversion List down here at the bottom right hand side. And what that basically is going to do, it's going to compile your photos into a edible video. So once you've added it, we're going to hit convert all. And you'll see it has a little progress bar up here telling you how long it's going to be until it's done. I'm going to skip ahead at this point so you don't have to sit through this boring part. So our video file has been converted now and I've clicked up here at the top where it goes to step two. And when we highlight the video file that was created, you're going to notice it's in a four by three ratio and uh, that's because we shot it in photo mode. If you filmed in video mode, it's going to be in the proper 16 by 9. So what happens now is this is the file. Down here is our timeline. This is where we're going to do all the editing. So we're going to drag this file down to our timeline. And you're going to notice right away it's automatically cropped it. So it's now at a 16 by 9. If we highlight up here, it's going to go back to the old ratio. If we highlight here, it's going to go back to the 16 by 9. And this is we always want to make sure this is highlighted down here when we're editing because if we have this one highlighted, the original, it's going to make the changes to it not to what we're editing. And I just wanted to make sure that was clear because in the early days when I was learning, that used to confuse me. I'd be clicking over here and I'm wondering, "Okay, why is my aspect ratio gone back to the old, you know, 4 by 3?" So just make sure that you always have this clip down here selected. So what we can do is if we go to the right hand side here, we can play around with some of the uh, settings over here. Saturation, contrast, exposure. Um, you don't want to overdo things because you can make them look a little funny. And But the first thing we're going to do is we're just going to bump up the saturation a little bit just to pull out the colors. You can see the sky is getting nice and blue. The colors in the trees are really starting to come out. And as for exposure, this you can go either way with this. You know, if you bring the exposure down, you're going to start seeing more detail in the clouds, which is kind of nice for time lapses because really that's what makes a beautiful time lapse. But the picture gets a little muddy. If we go up. It brightens the picture up nicely but you know you start to lose the detail and the cloud gets washed out so you want to find a happy medium 
And uh, for this one, I think I'm just going to bump it down a little bit. And uh, then if we bring the contrast up, that kind of... And then saturation, maybe a little more. And then finally, we'll just maybe sharpen it just a little bit. Again, this is very basic time-lapse editing. I have a more advanced tutorial that I'm working on using LR time-lapses and Lightroom. And you have a lot more control. But for this one, this is just a basic uh, tutorial. So now that we have the colors and everything the way we like it, we can go ahead and we can add some movement. Adding movement to your time lapse can really make it look dynamic, just kind of make it pop. I actually already had a tutorial where I show you how to add movement to your time lapses in GoPro Studio, but I'll just show you here quickly again. And if I move too fast, you can go back and watch that tutorial. You just have to do a search in my channel. So we're going to add some movement. So we have our clip highlighted. We're going to go to framing controls. Let's shut that window down. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to add a keyframe. Make sure that our scrub bar is at the front. And we click add a keyframe. And then we're going to click this button here, right above it. Or and what that's going to do is put the scrub bar all the way to the end, to the very last very last keyframe and we're going to make another one so now we've got two keyframes we've got one at the very beginning and one at the very end so we got to decide are we going to zoom in are we going to zoom out are we going to pan to the side you can do all kinds of very creative things I think I want to have it start zoomed in and we're going to pull back so what we're going to do is keep our scrubber on the first frame and we're going to zoom into about where we want it using under framing controls using the zoom so let's maybe start about here and we can also adjust the vertical and the horizontal to line things up how we how we want them you just have to be careful because if you do the vertical and the horizontal too much it may not give you the desired effect it may come in like it's coming in or may look like it's coming in from the side more of a pan than a zoom so I think that's what we'll leave it at so now we can preview it and I should mention we just leave the last frame the way it was so if we pull the slide bar you can see how it's zooming out so yeah that is actually really nice so now at this point we just have to export it and there's a lot more you can do here um, you know you can just play around with the controls you can adjust the white balance before you export you know you can either cool down the image a bit maybe warm it up with some yellows and same with the tint maybe bump it up a bit or bump it up down you know just play around with it until you get something that you like Finally, one last thing, you can adjust the speed. If you find when you're doing a preview that it's either too fast or too slow, I don't recommend slowing them down too much, but if you want to speed them up a bit, you can um, let's maybe bump it up, not too much. Maybe do 100 and yeah, good, 134. Also, make sure you take the check mark out of Enable Flux. If you don't, it's going to add a long time to your render process. That's more if you're doing slow motion. So I'll do another maybe tutorial on that at another time. But yeah, just definitely make sure you take Enable Flux, the check mark out. So there, now we've got the speed set up. So we can go ahead and export this now, but we're going to do one last thing here. I actually had one of our one of my subscribers ask me in another video, so I'll just show you how to do it here quick. So this first clip we have, we've got it going normal, the way it was shot. But at the end, we want it to reverse and go even faster. So let's, we're going to copy this clip, and we're going to paste it. 
So now we got two identical clips. They've been edited the same, and make sure you do it this way, copy and paste, because if you just drag it down from up here again, it's not going to have the same edits, because that's the original, right? So it's going to look funny. So that's the original, and now here's the one we've copied, which is identical at this point. What we're going to do is go up to Video Control. We're going to put a check mark in Reverse. And now we're going to even speed it up a bit more. Let's go all the way up to maybe 250. So now what's going to happen when we preview it, let's go back to the beginning. We'll let's drag it along. It's zooming out at the normal speed. And then we get to the end of the time lapse. And then you're going to see it's going to go back to the original, but a lot faster. So that's another little technique you can play around with. And it helps make your time lapses a little longer because, you know, you shoot for an hour and you end up with a 20 second time lapse. So you can add some different effects, edit them together, you know, just to kind of stretch it out so you can get like a 30 to 40 minute video. So yeah, so now we're going to export it. So we click up here on export. And for the most part, on YouTube, I always just do mine at 1080. A lot of people don't have the proper equipment to play back at 4K. And uh, plus it adds a lot of extra render time. So until things catch up, the industry catches up and everybody's on 4K displays, I usually just will be doing 1080. So, you, But you can do yours at whatever you like. And uh, so select that and we'll click export. Give it a name. So I'm going to call this Spring Spring Bank Park. So we named it to what we want and we click save and it's going to export. Well, I hope this video was of use to you. And again, it's some basic tips. If you're an advanced user, this video probably had nothing new for you in it. But um, if you fa found it useful, give me a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel. We have many new tutorials going to be coming over the coming months. And we'll see you in the next one.